to my channel. Um, today I wanted to just talk to you about um, toddler, toddler learning and how I go about doing that for my toddler. I have a playlist of like a lot of the activities that I've done with her throughout the past few months. Um, but this video is to basically summarize everything that I've done from ages one to two. We started our toddler learning journey at about 17 months. And as of this video, um, my toddler is two years old and five months. However, when this video is posted, she'll probably be about two and a half years old, two years and six months. So prior to um, starting at 17 months, we did not do anything, you know, remotely formal. It was just, you know, playing, singing, um, and just, you know, giving her those little baby toys like rattle, rattlers or rattles <laughs> and things of that nature. You know, she wasn't having any screen time. It was just all your traditional and normal um, infant type um, stuff, right? But at 17 months, I went ahead and decided to be a little bit formal and start teaching her the basics, you know, colors and numbers, um, being more um, engaged, involved, and intentional when it comes to reading a book to her every single day, um, repetition, you know, being consistent, having a routine creating a list of things I wanted her um, or a list of milestones that I wanted her to reach. So um, at 17 months, that's when I started. So I'll put a playlist or a link to my toddler learning preschool playlist that goes over, you know, what do I do on each day? How do I organize it? Um, what are some items that I actually use? Um, what are some um, things that we do in a day in terms of a day in a life? How do I do it? How do I teach it? Where do I teach it? Um, and what do I use? I think I already said that <laughs> and things of that nature. We um, don't use any type of curriculum. Although in one of my videos, you'll see like some specific curriculum, like I think um, Saxon math um, pre-K. But if you see any specific type of curriculum like the Saxon math, or, you know, um, teaching your baby how to read in 100 days, I think it's called, or Alpha Phonics, um, or Alpha Omega, I think it's called, or Alpha Phonics. I'll put the video um, below. But those things were not used on a daily basis. I use those as a spine or a foundation to kind of get ideas of what I can do on a daily or weekly basis with my toddler. So again, this video is basically going to summarize what we did from ages one to two, specifically 17 months to through about two years and five months. At two and a half years old, I'm going to, or between two and a half and three years old, I'm going to go ahead and kind of change up our daily learning folder. Um, I'm going to keep our routine the same as far as what we do on a daily basis, but what we use, I'll change that stuff out. So um, here we go. So currently this is our daily routine, okay? And this is how I kind of split everything from top schooling. You know, it says 12 months to age two, but again, we started around 17 months. And you can still call age two and three, you know, top schooling, but I just broke it down this way, no rhyme or reason, okay? Um, and this is our schedule. On a Sunday, we are doing our daily learning folder. We're doing that every single day. And I have a few videos on that. And within this video, I will show you um, what our daily learning folder looks like. We do our flashcards. I will show you in this video what the flashcards look like and what we specifically go through. We do our read aloud. For the read aloud, I normally read the same book, one or two books, throughout the entire week. That way she becomes familiar with the book. Um, and then the following week, I'll move on to another book. Many, many times I will read the book of the week and then she will love whatever book we read prior in the prior week. So we'll go ahead and read that book as well. So that's how we end up 
reading, you know, one, two, three or four books a day because she likes the prior week's books so much. Okay. Um, our read aloud also, um, I like to relate it to whatever our, um, skill of the day is. So in this instance, um, on us on Sundays, I focus on grooming, self-care and life skills. Okay. And whatever our read aloud is, it's going to be a little bit about, you know, grooming more than likely it's about, you know, taking care of yourself, loving the skin that you're in. Um, it's a lot of books, um, that showcase African-American characters, black and brown characters with big, beautiful, kinky, curly hair and things of that nature. Life skills, home cleaning, that's just your normal, you know, teaching the child the basic skills of um, sharing and, you know, putting up your clothes, folding clothes, putting things away, getting your own bowls um, and cups and so forth. So basic, basic life skills. On a Monday, again, we do our daily learning folder, flashcards, read aloud. And the focus of the day or the skill of the day is colors, okay? So that day is colors. And as you can see, life skills. But again, the daily learning folder, the flashcards, and the life skills are normally done every single day. With life skills, guys, we're not like doing anything formal where I'm saying, hey, I'm going to teach you today how to do A, B, C, D. Or I'm going to teach you today how to do this and how to do that. No, when it comes to life skills, it's whatever is happening in our daily life. If she needs um, a lesson on, you know, some type of character trait like sharing, then we're going to talk about that. If she's having a temper tantrum, we're going to talk about that. And yes, I actually talk to my toddler. I very rarely speak and, you know, in baby language or use a baby tone with her, a tone of voice with her. I do when I'm reading um, or if she's sick or sad, you know, sometimes I'll do that. But normally I speak to her like I'm speaking to you right now. Full sentences, complete sentences. Um, my word choice is what I would use in my everyday life. Um, I just talk to her like a normal human being because that's what she is, a little human being. On Tuesdays, um, again, our folder, flashcards, read aloud, and we focus on hand-eye coordination. Um, hand-eye coordination will also include items like um, um, one-to-one correspondence, um, wrist rotation, a lot of fine motor skills, I would say, and, of and dexterity, as you can see here at the bottom, and, of course, again, life skills. On Wednesdays, again, the, our daily learning folder, flashcards, read aloud. Our focus of the day is shapes and life skills. Thursdays, as you can see, everything remains the same. The difference is we include sorting, matching, and puzzles. And with that one, it's a lot of fine motor skills. Um, there's fine motor skills every day. Everything that you can do throughout or everything that I do throughout the week focuses on both gross motor skills and fine motor skills, okay, um, based on the activity, the game or whatever we're using to present whatever the skill of the day or the um, lesson of the day or topic of, topic of the day will be. On Friday and Saturdays, again, all remains the same, but we focus on numbers, number recognition, letters, letters recognition, letter sounds, writing, tracing, and things of that nature, okay? So this is our schedule, this or our routine. This is what I like to do. How long does it take to do all this in one day? The daily learning folder and the flashcards together take about 15 to 20 minutes, and that's assuming my daughter is, you know, not having a very good day or she, or she, or she's having a great day, but we're doing the process twice. So 15 to 20 minutes on a good day where, where, you know, she's focused, then we are getting through it. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. The read aloud that, that just totally depends on how long it takes. Okay. Depends on the child. The focus of the day like the grooming, self-care on this day, the colors, hand-eye coordination, dexterity, shapes, sorting, matching puzzles, you know, the numbers and stuff like that. The focus of the day, um, it can take five minutes 
It can take 30 minutes. It can take an hour, not in one sitting. I normally do not sit at one time and complete anything for longer than 20 minutes with my toddler. So when she was 17 months, it started off with five to 10 minutes. But right now at age two years old and four to five months, she can sit for 20, 25 minutes and then she'll get up and go do her own thing. And then she'll come back like five minutes later or 20 minutes later and she will want to do something else or do it all over again. So I'm not doing all these things in one sitting. I am doing the daily learning folder and the flashcards in one sitting, but the focus of the day, um, I am definitely not doing in one sitting or Am I doing it right after we complete the learning folder or the flashcards, unless she's eager and she wants to? So we find time throughout the day before bedtime, many times, to do a quick um, file folder game or a quick game or a quick whatever to um, put in the time for whatever the focus of the day is. We have missed many of days, guys, where we don't do anything that day because life happens or the child just doesn't want to do anything. Hey, they're one and two and three and four years old, and that just may happen. Um, but when those things do occur, you know, we're watching, you know, leapfrog videos. So whatever our focus of the day is, I may not sit down and do it with her, but she's more than happy to watch a leapfrog video or a YouTube video on whatever the focus of the day is or ABC mouse. You know, we substitute many, many, many times. And again, sometimes we don't do anything throughout the day because, you know, things happen. So next, what I want to do is show you um, our milestones. I created a milestone chart or a goal sheet. So in the beginning of the year, I wrote out what is what, what are all the things that a one to two year old, what are all the things they should know? What do I want to focus on or teach my child throughout um, that year? And this is what I've come up with. Um, oh, by the way, this is just <laughs> a drawing that she did. Not a drawing, but a drawing. And she used different things to create this. And I just laminated it and created a um, page um, separator that in my binder. But here are all the things that I said I want my child to kind of know. The first thing is meeting all the age-appropriate health milestones. So, you know, when you go to the doctor or your pediatrician, they kind of tell you what your child should be doing or what milestones they should be reaching at a certain time or a certain age. Um, so that encompasses all those types of things. You can ask your pediatrician for a list. You can Google a list. There are many books on what a child should be doing um, naturally um, at every stage of their life. Will every child meet those milestones? Absolutely not. Whether or not your child has, you know, physical, mental, or emotional um, ailments, or may, or they may not have anything at all, you know, any um, issues at all, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to meet all of these milestones or targets, okay? Um, and that's okay if they don't. But if they are far behind from those targets, then you absolutely want to have a conversation with your pediatrician, okay? And you may end up wanting to do some testing and things of that nature just to catch things early and to do some um, interventions as early as possible, okay? So some of the things that I've written down here and typed out, and again, as we as I go throughout the year, I check off what she has met. If she's done it once or twice or five times, I'm not checking it off. It has to be consistent for, you know, three to six months before I'll check anything off. So I created this list when she was 17 months old and I recently updated it in 2018 just to um, add a little bit of additional items. So again, as I see that she's consistent over three to six months with a particular goal or milestone here, I will check it off. We have follow rules or directions, taking turns, sharing, following directions agreeably and easily. Of course, kids are going to have temper tantrums. Of course, if they're the only child or if they're not the only child, they're not going to want to share or do what you ask them to do in an agreeable manner every single time. But are they able to do that on a consistent basis, right? Um, pay attention for 15 to 20 minutes 
hold a crayon and pencil. As you can see, it's not saying hold it correctly, you know, the, using the proper way, but can they grip it? Can they hold it um, using their fingers? Um, letter sounds and letter names. My child knows the letter sounds and, they, and she knows letter names. However, it's not, um, she doesn't do it on a consistent basis. She only does it if I'm doing it with her, she can repeat it and it's great if I'm doing it with her. But if I have her do it herself or match it, she's not there yet. And that's perfectly fine, guys. She's two. Many kids are not going to get some of this stuff until they're three and four years old, maybe even five. But, you know, everybody learns at a different pace and that's okay. Be patient. Give yourself and child grace and just know that eventually they will learn it, assuming there are no um, physical, mental or emotional um, things that are impeding upon that. OK, um, follow a dotted line. Not there yet. Can she recognize and say the basic colors? Yep. Uh, recognize basic shapes. Count 1 to 15, 30. Right now, she can only count 1 to 15. 1 to 10 without my help. 1, um, 11 to 15 with a little bit of assistance. But she's definitely not at 30. So that one we're leaving open. Um, the next one here is say and recognize basic vocabulary. Words like can she name and recognize and sort and match articles of clothing, types of fruits and veggies, animals, transportation, body parts, and so forth. Absolutely. Use appropriate. Now, this one is using the appropriate three-finger grip when using pencils and crayons and scissors. Absolutely not there yet. One-to-one um, -one correspondence, sorting, matching, using big motions. Normally, when it comes to um, practicing the skills needed and the muscles needed um, for writing. I like for her to engage um, her arm, elbow, and shoulder to make big motions on the board. As far as tracing letters, I'm not big on tracing letters at this age, and nor will I be maybe even at three. Um, I won't be big at tracing a letter. I think it's harder for a child to use their wrist to write than to engage their entire arm muscle to um, write, but we'll see how that goes. Some next things, you know, scribble, fine motor skills, fine motor skills, you know, using your fingers, your, you know, wrist rotation, you know, um, holding objects, gripping objects, large motor skills are engaging large muscles like arms, legs, torso, feet. As you can see, we have all that down pat saying words and phrases. 50 or more. At this point, um, some I will tell you guys, when I see her saying words and phrases a lot, I actually write them down. <laughs> and at this point, she's at like 110, 120 words and fr slash phrases that she uses on a consistent basis. And she knows what she's saying and she can recognize um, she can recognize it and we can clearly understand not only us as parents, but others can clearly understand when she uses those. Okay. And that comes from talking to her like a normal person that comes from using words, sentences, phrases, um, that, exp um, expressions that we would normally use on an everyday basis when we're talking to one another, um, or the way I speak to my older child, that's how I speak to her. So I think her vocabulary and the phrases, and the clarity in the words that she uses comes from us talking to her like a normal human being and not using a lot of baby language and baby tones when we're speaking to her and also explaining what we're doing when we're doing something. When I'm changing her diaper, I explain what I'm doing. When we're taking her a shower, we explain what we're doing. If I am making a sandwich, I explain what I'm doing. I talk Whatever process that's being taken, I talk it out. And I think that's helped her with speech and vocabulary. And I've already explained what life skills were. That was, you know, putting things away, getting things on their own, um, bringing things to you, recalling where things belong, being able to put those things back. And with my daughter, I've, always, I've also noticed that she's a little organized and very meticulous. She puts things in order, like in a line. And um, she groups things, similar things in um, in order. So, yeah.
So that is um, a summary of our goal sheet, our milestones. And this again is a summary of what our routine looks like on a daily basis. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But this is what I aspire to do on a daily basis. So let me go ahead and show you um, the example of the daily learning folder and the flashcards. Again, we do those things. We try our best to do those things on a daily basis. So if we have five to 10 minutes a day, these are the things that we're going to do. Everything else is if the day is normal and it's going right and things are impeding in that, then we'll go ahead and do the focus of the day and everything else, okay? Um, again, I'll put some links in the description box below to kind of um, show you some day in the life of what we do for colors and grooming and shapes and sorting, matching puzzles, numbers. What do we do um, for those types of things? They change daily. It depends on how everyone feels. Um, that that is what determines what file folder game we use or what activity we use or um, what approach or method we take to make it fun, okay? Everything we do, guys, it is um, um, very hands... Okay, I wanted to switch the camera back over. But everything we do, guys, is very, very hands-on and it's interactive, um, I don't want to sit in one spot with a child um, who is so young and focus on a worksheet or a workbook. We are not using worksheets. We are not using workbooks. I don't even think I'm going to do that in, you know, when she's three years old and I create another video and I show you what her folder looks like and I show you some things that we're going to do for, you know, the next school year when she'll be, you know, three years old. Those are the kind of things that I'm not really interested in doing for, you know, a toddler. Um, maybe in kindergarten, we will focus on that and or incorporate that, you know, like pre-K four, um, kindergarten, age five, we'll consider that. But um, I just use my curriculum or whatever books I have as a spine or a foundation to help me teach different concepts or to help engage the child. But we'll do things outside the house, inside the house. We'll, you know, play games in the backyard or go, or go to the park. Um, we just have so many hands-on stuff, um, that makes it really, really fun. We sing every day. We dance every day. We joke around every day. Um, we just have fun. Learning is fun. Okay. It shouldn't be boring. It shouldn't, you know, take too much time at this age. It should be really, really fun. Another thing for life skill, I don't know if I ever showed this in a video, but things like this, you know, how to cut, you know, those types of things kind of can help your child um, incorporate life skills. I have created um, project boards of information. So, you know, a science project, that um, project board that has three parts to it. I have um, created project boards that focuses on colors or project boards that focus on, you know, letters. And we do matching where I'll put, um, I'll laminate everything and put Velcro behind it and we'll match it. I have a human body, um, board that focuses on, you know, the parts of the body, like your eyes, eyebrows, nose, you know, feet, toes, elbows, shoulders, stomach, back, things like that. And then inclusive in that one is like, you know, articles of clothing. I could be, um, you know, when you receive those, um, not magazines, but you receive those sales papers, those sell papers in the mail, um, those circulars that kind of tell you what the discounts look like for your grocery stores in your area. I take those and I'll cut out pictures and we'll sort them, you know, by find different um, or uh, oranges or different colored apples. I'll cut them out and we'll sort them and she'll have to put all the apples together or all the oranges together. You know, all those tangerines, clementines, oranges, na um, navel oranges, all those are different types of oranges, but they're oranges. So she puts them all in one pile. Or when those things come in the mail, I will um, just open it up. And if we are doing, let's say, um, colors, I'll say point out everything that's red. And she'll point out everything that's red or yellow or, or brown or whatever. Um, and if we're doing life skills, 
and I get one from like a Sally's beauty salon or something, beauty supply. I'll say, is this a comb or is this a brush? You know, where, where do we put, where do we use that? Our hair, you know, we'll do stuff like that. Um, just whatever you have in your home, utilize that. Whatever you get in the mail, in a magazine, newspaper, utilize that. Um, a laminator, a printer, lamination paper, printer paper, you know, those little dotters, um, that those bingo dotters, um, markers, crayons, scissors, um, those big thick pencils, um, paint, watercolors, and the supplies that you need for that, you know, the appropriate paper and its thickness to um, do those types of things. That's all you need, guys. That's all you need. Um, you don't really need much to teach your child. Be creative. Have fun with it. Okay, let me stop talking. Let me go ahead and um, show you those examples of um, what we use in our learning folder and the flashcards. So let me turn the camera over and show you those things right about now. So here is our learning folder. This is like a... Um, binder easel that I got from Amazon okay within this pouch here this is where I house all the um, items that I will need for um, the folder so it is inclusive of let me show you just little strips of laminated paper if I need to write anything um, it includes my child's name. I just um, laminated some paper, wrote her name in permanent marker, and then cut them up so that we can, you know, put them in the right order. This here just has different things related to weather. Okay, so when we're talking about the weather of the day or whatever, I can pull out these pictures. Okay. So that's all that's within this here. I just like to keep it all together, okay? Um, we do something called see it, build it, write it. So remember I said, um, we cut up her name here. So seeing it, that's seeing it here. This is building it. And then I will write it and say the letter sounds as I'm writing it on this. This is for the type of weather. So this stuff here that I talked about earlier, I will just put whatever the weather is here. And then although she does not know what this is, I'll say it's 68 degrees outside and I'll just bubble in here and go all the way up to whatever the degrees is. Um, Fahrenheit, we use Fahrenheit here in the United States. Oh. And I will um, say, well, what kind of clothes do we wear if it's cold outside? And we'll talk about the different articles of clothing. I never printed and laminated the different types of article of clothing, but that's next. When I um, redo this binder, when um, she's closer to three years old, um, her three-year-old binder will definitely have articles of clothing. And her three-year-old binder will be a little thicker because we're going to focus on a lot more skills. The skills that are in here, we're going to keep it. I'm just adding to it. When you see this here, when she sees this here, she's singing the ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, okay? We're singing the ABCs here. We normally do this page twice. We also do this page twice where we are saying our numbers from one to 10. I do need to update this from one to 15. So although you don't see one to 15 here, which is what she technically knows, after we reach 10, I then tell her, 11, 12, and she's repeating it with me, but I do need to go ahead and update this with that. We just started that, I would say like two months ago, so I just didn't get a chance to update the folder. And this one here, she's counting the dots, and then one, and then she'll find one, and she'll put one here. So I'll take all these off, we will count the dots and put the corresponding um, number to the dots. As you can see, it's only six, because when our, um, day or focus of the day on the Saturday and Sunday is numbers and stuff on that day that's when we go in and we do the rest and we have so many other activities that we do with numbers so I'm I'm okay with being letting this stay here 
from one to six. And then we'll do the shapes. The reason why you see the numbers and the shapes and letters in black and white, because I read somewhere where it was easier for kids to learn um, information in black and white. I am not for sure where I read that from. Um, I apologize, I can't give you that information, but there is something about the, con the contrasting colors of black and white that works best for your toddlers or little ones when it in terms of learning, but you know, you can look that up. Um, and then here's a matching game for all of our, um, for all of our um, shapes. So with this one, we'll go over shapes and we'll go, and we will go over colors. So I'm taking them all off and she is putting them on. So I'm saying, where's the diamond? She'll take the diamond, put it on the diamond. I'll say, what color is the diamond? And things of that nature. This is another one for color. So she's matching and she's doing colors with this one. This one is brown bear, brown bear. So I will say brown bear, brown. Well, I'll take all this stuff off and I'll say brown bear, brown bear. What do you see? I see an orange fish looking at me and then she'll find the orange fish and then she'll place it anywhere on here. This is something else for shape recognition. So she'll take all the shapes off. And then she'll have to recognize that this fits here. And it does. And then we'll move on with that. And this is basic um, correspondence and matching. She has, she got this down, guys, like within the first two, three months. So this shouldn't even be here. This is so easy for her. So yeah, it's still here, but she, we normally skip this. This is too easy for her. This is matching. Again, matching, you take them all off and she'll put them on and she has to repeat the word. So I'll say sailboat and then she'll say sailboat. But at, the, but at this time, you know, I don't have to say what the items are. She knows what the items are, except for motorcycles. So motorcycles, she doesn't know without me saying it. Taxi, she doesn't know without me saying it. Sailboat, she doesn't know, she doesn't know without me saying it. But everything else, she can say the word put it on and match it. I don't have to help her. Some more matching. Match, she has all these down pack. This one, she has down packed as well. So that's all that we have in our toddler folder. Um, again, this is what I used from 17 months to about two years old um, and three, four months. Um, and although she's not three yet, I'm, I'm really thinking about starting early and going ahead and adding um, some of the items that I am preparing for her next learning phase, which is age three, because guys, she has all this down pack. It is super easy. The only one that is not easy for her is the see it, build it, write it. Obviously, she can't write it. I'm writing it for her. And the build it, she can't put it in the proper order, but I'm doing it for her. But she knows the letter sounds. Everything else in this is super easy for her. So let me go ahead and show you for our flash card. This is our travel bin. If we are going somewhere and we're traveling, I am definitely not taking the toddler learning folder. I normally take the, top, the travel bin. And this is where I also house... Um, our flashcards. So I have a video about what's in this travel bin. I'm not going to go through the travel bin. I'm only going to take out the flashcards and show you the flashcards. Everything else you can look um, in that other video to see what we travel with. So here are her number flashcards. And with these flashcards, guys, I'm going quick. I'm like one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going super quick. Takes about a minute. And this goes to the number 20. But like I told you, we are only up to 15. So I will only go up to 15 with her on this. These are her shapes. And again, I go, th go through it quickly. Oval, rectangle, diamond, heart. That's how fast we're going. No need for me to go super slow or take my time because in the toddler learning folder, that's where we go a little bit slower. That's where we take our time. And then we have her 
letters where I show her her name, say each sound. And then when you see these flashcards, these flashcards are letter sounds. So when you see the folder, the folder is letter names, singing them, ABC song, A, B, C, D. These flashcards, simply letter sounds. And I'm going quick, A, B, K, D, E, F. That's how fast I'm going. And she gets it so quickly. She's gotten this so quickly, but again, we go through these daily basis. Folder, flashcards, daily basis, okay? And it's also important, guys, that you properly um, pronounce these letters correctly. Um, if I remember, I will put a link in this video in the description box to the logic of English um, letter sounds. That's the video that I use to properly learn or reteach myself how to say each letter. So I make sure that when I'm pronouncing it or saying it to her, I'm saying it that way. And then finally, our colors. So quickly, blue, yellow, orange, green, black, white, and so forth. So again, this is what we do on a daily basis, our toddler learning folder and our flashcards. And again, for everything else on this list, I'll again put the link in the description box below that shows you the bins that I have with all the activities within those bins that relates to the focus of the day, maybe grooming colors and everything else we spoke about in this video. I don't have any videos, I don't think, on my organization system or all my file folder games, but there are so many videos on YouTube about file folder games and how to organize file folder games. I don't think it's necessary for me to, you know, show you that. However, um, you can use Pinterest, you can Google Teachers Pay Teachers to create your own file folder game um, by simply printing something out, laminating it, coloring it, not coloring it, cutting it out. And, you know, you can tape, glue, Velcro, um, into an actual file folder and make it interactive for your child. I, I do that for my toddler and I do that for my fifth grader for different subjects. So again, I hope you like this video. I hope it was of interest to you. Um, if you have any questions or concerns for me, please leave them in the um, comment box below. I encourage everyone to just, you know, go ahead and just um, engage in conversation. Um, if you have any ideas that you are using that you want to share with others, please feel free to do this, do just that. And as always, guys, you make it a great day and um, be blessed.